What's a sign that somebody wasn't raised right? They don't take responsibility for their actions. Or worse, they want you to take responsibility for their actions. You give them a lift and they leave rubbish in your car. I forgot my candies and trash in a carpool 6 years ago and I still remember it. The driver rushed us out because he made a mistake to be fair, but my ducking brain won't forget it. How they treat people from whom they have nothing to gain. Retail will tell you about 75% of people exhibit this sign. The word no just means throw a fit and be as obnoxious as you can be until you get your way. No does not mean that rules are rules or someone's job might be on the line. They're the important one, not anyone else. I'm an overpass, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Manager in fast food. After midnight our menu changes slightly so that we don't do certain items and the loose change menu isn't in effect. All of this is in the ads for such items mind you. But when I tell someone, sorry man can't do that for that price at this time, because the register automatically switches over at midnight there's literally nothing I can do. People have a ducking fit. I've had people break windows, pull out a metal bat from Pinja's seat and threaten me. People report me, spit at me. Ducking children all of them. We also close a store and go drive through only after 11pm because it's just me and one other guy and we can't keep an eye on the whole store by ourselves. We also aren't allowed to accept people walking up to the window because of our insurance. It's much easier for them to reach us and the register etc. The amount of times I say no to people and they get angry and threaten me. Like, you going crazy is exactly the reason we don't accept walkers. Even had two dudes try read my name badge, ask when I finish, and what my address was. People get so riled over a bloody Big Mac. If they make messes in public areas and just wander off, leaving trash in the theater, not flushing, leaving the cart in a parking space, edit, forgot the theater thing is the norm in Britain. I meant in general, leaving a mess where it's not supposed to be. Working in a theater, I can tell you a good number of people treat the place as their personal dumping ground. And that's apart from the people who make big messes and just skedaddle. I'm talking people who spill their XXL soda and just walk out. I'm had the pleasure of walking into a theater and finding three separate pools of vomit. Like WTF people, honestly. Disrespecting people for doing their job. I worked at an office supply company while I was in college. Let's call it Paperclips. I had a full-time position, inventory specialist, on top of going to school full-time, and I was going through a bit of a rough patch. During back to school in late September this little girl comes, in escorted by what I can only describe as an alpha Karen. The kid started pouting and saying she didn't want to go back to school. I was busy running my cycle count report when Ak pointed at me and said something along the lines of if you don't go to school you'll end up working at Paperclips like this guy. Oh, that made me mad. I don't remember exactly what I said in response, but it went essentially like, ma'am, I graduate in 3 months from university less than 1 mile from Paperclips and have a job lined up at local hospital. I hope she works here, or at MacDoodle so maybe she'll learn the respect you didn't teach her. Not nearly as elegant or eloquent at the time, but you get it. The only time I've ever been written up for a customer interaction and I don't regret it. Edit, this isn't quite as neat of a closer as the above, but I do want to clarify my GM was awesome, and didn't write me up. At Paperclips all customer complaints go, went, through the district manager, so the write up came from the DM. My GM told me not to worry about it, because I was leaving soon anyway. I miss that guy sometimes. I work with a great administrative team in my chosen career field now too, but I don't think I would have survived retail as long as I did without the support of good managers. Lack of personal accountability. They can never admit wrongdoing on their part. It's always someone else's fault. Yes totally. And it's often. Because immature parents don't realize they should model this behavior by apologizing to their children when they, parent, do something wrong. When you don't respect your kids they can become disrespectful ricks. Not respecting personal boundaries. If you're wondering why someone has these sorts of issues, take a look at their parents. Dear god I used to be friends with a guy who was like this. I made the mistake of talking him through some difficult things and he took that to mean that I wanted him present 24 over 7. 
he'd see that I was hanging out with somebody else and then text me bugging me to ditch that person and hang with him instead because he was sad and lonely. I understand not wanting to be sad and lonely, but you can't make me ditch all my other friendships to fix that. One rule for me one rule for you parents that mess up on the discipline slash accountability stage of parenting produce these people. Rules for thee, but not for me. Who are the guys who spit out their chewing gum into urinals? I see this all the time at work, and I work in a high-end corporate place. Do they think it dissolves and goes down the pipe? The janitor has to pick that out. I had a guy chiz on the floor in the bathroom at my work then apologize because I was working the shift not my coworker he hated. People are ducking weird dude. They don't have manners or respect anyone. They never see what they do wrong. Are the old I only give respect if it's earned. So I'm gonna be rude to the world. And if it's rude back there the a-holes gotta love those talks with people. How they act as a boss when their employee messes up. Yelling and belittling shouldn't be your first option. This was what made me respect the absolute hell out of my manager. I made a mistake on a job a while back, like a big duck up, that cost us a large sum of money. I was fully expecting to get chewed out, and a you duck up again, you're out the door, because that's how previous managers had treated us. It's no wonder we had a horrific management and employee turnover rate for years. But no, he came over to the car I was working on, looked at what happened, figured out how the mistake was made, and we talked about it for a couple minutes. I was pretty upset about it, because I'm usually not the type of tech who is negligent and makes mistakes, so when I do, it profoundly bothers me. He saw that. He listened to what I said, and he went through the process of getting replacement parts ordered for what I messed up. The next morning he came to me again and said you know, I was thinking about you last night after I got home and thinking of what you could do to prevent this mistake from happening again in the future, gave me a few suggestions for the future and closed the conversation with a pat on the shoulder and a we won't need to have this conversation again, brother, I trust you. It was the most meaningful conversation I have ever had with a manager. I got the sense that he really wants to see his employees succeed and grow. It gave me confidence in a moment in which I had none left. They always portray themselves as a victim. Nothing is ever their fault and somebody is always out to get them. The ultimate entitled boob. And not the good kind of boob either. Let me share a story. Part of my job is to fingerprint people for background checks. I come to work, look at my appointments, and then do them. I had just finished a 1030 apt and was about to call my 1040 when I was interrupted by this daughter and father combo. They said they had been waiting for 30 minutes and when would we get to them. I looked at my schedule. Strange. I had taken everyone in on time so I figured they were just here super early. I asked them for their apt paper or screen from their phone and they go crazy. You make us wait and then you don't trust us. Listen, I just need to see it, so that I can see what time is your app now. You bring your boss out here right now. From prior experiences, I knew there was no reasoning with these type of customers, so I asked the receptionist to call for my boss while I bring in my 1040. My boss is able to retrieve their ID and we call headquarters to find out when in God's name is their app. Turns out, they didn't even have one for that day. Turns out, they had a 10am app 3 months ago, in another city, in another state. I'll let them know about this, and they go no, we have one today. So I'm show them my schedule. Look, you're not on here, you don't have an app today it's right there. Learn how to do your job. You wasted our time, her name is right there. I look at her ID and it's a totally different name. The daughter, who at this point, is crying and playing victim trying to blame us along with the father, goes that's my nickname on your schedule I look at her blankly. So you're telling me, you came to get, fingerprinted through a government organization, and instead of using your real name, you used a nickname which bears zero resemblance to your legal name? She starts wailing it's not my fault. It's not my fault. They started threatening to sue us, because we won't fingerprint them, because their daughter is missing work hours, because we're keeping her here. My boss and I just look at each other and smile, realizing the idiots that we are dealing with. He tells them, we are not paying you guys anything. The dad starts making a scene again, I'm going to call her employer and tell them not to bring customers to your facility anymore. My boss is okay with that, 
Truth be told, doing fingerprinting was just a service to our county. They actually lose money every day paying me for the position. Because the fingerprint company paid so low. We are just third party contractors. Anyway, eventually we give them the boot. But I still remember the girl wailing away it's not my fault. It's not my fault. And all I could do was glare at her with a look that said it really is your ducking fault duck parents who don't teach their children to take responsibility. How they treat animals and people without power. I remember hearing as a kid about a Native American belief that's really stuck with me. After you die and as you're entering the afterlife you must cross a bridge. This bridge is filled with every animal you had a personal encounter with in your lifetime and together as a whole they decide your fate whether or not you can cross the bridge to heaven. This was the first and only time I've heard of your fate being decided by animals. They litter. If you throw your chis on the floor then you have one, no respect and two, you're a tramp. We went for a trail walk that leads out toward a dam and some rock formations with mini waterfalls. Broken beer glow was strolled along the entire trail, an hour long walk, guys, and the amount of garbage at the falls was honestly mind blowing. Like someone had brought 10 or so full bags and just busted them open all over the place. It's one of few natural areas in that city, and it just sucks so much that people care so little. It doesn't take much effort to just not destroy a nice thing with your litter. I'd say on the other end of the spectrum, if someone is anxious about simple social interactions, like sharing their opinions, this is a big indicator that somebody's parent's temper had a hair trigger. Deleted. The waiter principle, a person's dealings with a waiter or waitress can reveal things otherwise not noticeable. I know a few of these types of people, and they tend to have one or more of the following traits. They are disrespectful to everyone, not just authority figures. Watch how they treat customer service or retail staff. They have no manners in general, or only use manners, when they absolutely have to in order to preserve their own interests. They are cruel to people and or animals, and laugh at the suffering of others. They are selfish. They destroy things, steal, and cheat. Some also commit more serious crime. They expect handouts from everyone. They shirk hard work and responsibility whenever they can. They complain a lot, and constantly act like they are a victim. They are terrible parents to their own children. Bruh, that is called psychopathy, and you should run when you see it. Someone that does things to intentionally hurt another person's feelings after they've expressed that that certain thing hurts their feelings. Person 1, I get angry if someone touches my hair. Person 2, touches it backslash haha. Are you angry? They never say please or thank you. My parents were super sticklers for rules and manners growing up, but they never say please or thank you in restaurants. It is so embarrassing eating out with them. They leave trash in theater and state that it's the employee's job to clean up their mess. I never thought of this before, but this is the absolute correct answer emo. You literally walk past trash cans on your way out, and you would be carrying out less stuff than you even brought in, so you obviously can carry it. They whistle, snap their fingers, or make that PSPSPS sound to get their server's attention in a restaurant. I snapped my fingers to get a teacher's attention once in middle school. She barked at me something fierce. I learned my lesson. Not putting the cart back at the grocery store. My dad forced me to leave it once because he had an adult tantrum at a store. I feel bad when I think about it lol it. Okay, short story time. TL, Dr. Ed and my dad and I were once at a grocery store and the entire shopping trip went fine until the end. My dad and I decided to go to the self-checkout. The machine worked just fine. Then I scanned an item. It was the last item to be scanned. That could both be weighed or scanned via barcode. But I chose to weigh the item instead. One of the attendants monitoring the self-checkout area said something along the lines of you can scan that item as well. And he flipped his lid. He was basically being a male Karen. But didn't ask for the manager. I don't remember what he said exactly. But it was embarrassing. Then my dad decided to grab all of the stuff we got and leave the store after we checked out. He said he didn't need the cart while carrying everything he bought. It wasn't but 5 to 6 bags and he told me to leave it at the register and said to me, just leave it, smarty at the register, can put it back. 
If anyone is about to ask why didn't you take the cart anyway, at that point he most likely would have yelled at me for doing so. TL, doctor, my dad flipped his lead over a clerk doing her job and told me to leave a shopping cart at the register. Still feel bad to this day. Turning conversation back to themselves at all cost. Being a good listener is a sign of a person raised well. Edit, to clarify, I don't mean quiet or adormant. I mean generous, empathetic, supportive, and curious. Good follow-up questions without making it about oneself, etc. Deleted. I'm gonna answer this literally. As a teacher, I see there's a lot of different values that go into parenting styles. Some that aren't my values, but still raise a productive, responsible, and successful child. But there is evidence of bad parenting from a child development point of view. Is extra clingy and implies or outright states you're their sole custodian for their well-being. Is incredibly aggressive about getting their way or being correct all the time. Responds to slights or inconveniences violently. Is extremely withdrawn and doesn't care for self. On the flip side, is very self-sufficient from a very young age and also has anxiety and or depression. Seeks attention constantly. Not just a lot, but constantly. Obviously, the child abuse signs are indicators of not being raised right and only apply here to actual children, but it never hurts to remind people of them. How suspicious bruising slash injuries on body where it's not normal to have injuries. X. Bruised forehead and skinned knees are normal on toddlers. Black eyes are not. Carefully covers parts of the body that would not normally be covered. X. Won't roll up sleeves even a little on hot days which, bonus, is also a sign of self-harm, is an appropriately sexual and or knowledgeable about sexuality for age group is weirdly afraid to be alone with another person. Not just, I don't want to go home because my dad's gonna give me a weapon for starting a fight at school, but something like finding a lot of excuses to not hang out with an older cousin ever is often dirty, stinky, soiled is often underfed tells you they are being abused I took this way too seriously, but there you go. Edit, people are commenting with personal situations that involve the warning signs of child abuse I mentioned, but aren't child abuse in their case. This is what makes it so hard to detect. Kids are always bruised, stinky, and secretive. What's important is to keep an open mind and sort of observe a pattern of signs and behaviors. If alarm bells go off, our first impulse is to explain it away, but making an anonymous tip is not as harmful as people believe. In my experience, nothing is even investigated until the reports pile up, unless you physically witness the abuse. Edit 2, just to be clear, the first list just means the parents or household should be better to optimally encourage the wellness of a child. The second is of warning signs of abuse. Oh my god I'm so dumb. I was like, what is underfed? I've never heard that before. Looked it up, and it was underfed. Oh sweet Jesus. I was reading it like underfed, like derp. Which is what I am. In their spare time they dress up like a bat, and beat up the mentally ill. Wayne Manor has a lot to answer for. They apologize for every little thing. Probably a sign that they grew up with abusive parents that got mad over anything and everything. I'm trying to break that habit RN and oh my god does it take such a huge amount of willpower not to apologize. We know someone that won't get a checking account slash direct deposit because the banks just steal your money and he takes his paycheck to a check cashing slash payday loan shop instead. We also know his mom, who is in her mid 40s and on her third bankruptcy. Edit, not discounting the likelihood that mom destroyed his credit long ago and still would empty his account today if given the chance, which still falls in the raised drunk category, if you ask me, but we are talking about a 20 year old guy living with mom no rent slash no car slash no kids, that shouldn't have any substantial debt slash expenses of his own to make overdraft fees. An issue. Financial management in general. They don't know how to do normal household stuff. I've seen people that don't even know how to make their own coffee or clean a toilet. Edit, I only mentioned making coffee as an example. If you don't know how to make coffee because you don't drink it, that's fine. God that's me. My mum won't let me touch anything because I don't know how to do it. Well no choose, you never taught me and you don't believe I googled it? Can't wait to move out and feel like a functioning human. 
they don't actually listen to what you're saying, are just trying to formulate a response. Edit. Thanks for the upvotes. Edit 2. Just want to clarify what I meant. The person in thinking of who does this, does this as a means of not really caring about your opinion, trying to make you look inferior, and rather than listening to why you feel the way you do, they want to try and just prove you wrong. I hope that makes sense. Like not being interested in having a discussion, more interest in showboating their own opinion slash beliefs slash experiences. I think that makes someone selfish, therefore maybe not raised right. I could be wrong. Just last weekend I met a woman who seemed like a nice lady. But when I tried to have a conversation with her, she would constantly interrupt and completely change the subject. After about 10 minutes I gave up. It was as if she didn't even hear what I was saying. Honestly, though, I got the impression that she doesn't even realize she does this. Edit. Thank you all for your comments. It's nice to hear other perspectives. The next time I encounter someone like this, I'll try to be more patient and understanding. Edit 2. I just realized that I was implying that this woman wasn't raised right. Other than her seemingly inability to stay focused in a conversation, she really was a nice person. Her subjects of conversation were more about others than herself. They don't say thank you to food servers. Someone brings you food, you say thanks, it ain't hard. They use suicide threats as manipulation. I've been told to call the mental hospital for them when they do this. They will take it seriously, and it's probably part of an underlying issue. Littering goddamn ducking littering. About time. I've been looking for this forever. Littering shows disrespect for our environment and contempt for everyone in it. They act like mental illness is something you can just get over. It's just all in your head I have an uncle who is a complete drunk. Gets off work and it's straight to getting drunk and possible till it's time to sleep. This dude kept telling me anxiety was a joke and that I don't have any problems. That hurt coming from a relative. Then I told him it is all in my head because it's a mental illness and that pissed him off and he tried fighting me. He then after trying to fight me, called the cops and said I had drugs on me, my medication, and tried getting me arrested. I was in a bad place in life and needed a place to stay. Obviously this was the wrong person to trust in helping me. They one up you all the time. I bet I could do it more often than those types of people. Always pay attention to how someone treats service industry workers, animals, and young children. People who don't offer to help you clean up when they are visiting you. Like having friends over and them leaving you with all the beer bottles, bowls, and glees on the table. I don't mind cleaning up, but I always offer when at someone else's house. You make the mess together. Wait really? Lol interesting. My mom would have strangled me if I ever allowed a guest to clean up, let alone ask them to- They don't put their shopping cart in the proper place when they're done with it. It's easy, it helps others, but there's no consequence to not doing it. The perfect litmus test for are you a decent human being? They cannot take responsibility for their actions. If they have zero manners. Inviting themselves to other people's homes or gatherings. Edit. This is now my most liked comment on Reddit. Thanks internet people. Years ago my ex and I were planning on doing a double date with my brother and his wife for Valentine's Day. One of those places that do tricks and cook the food on a big grill in front of you. My mother invited herself. And since the tables fit up to 10 people she invited more people. I didn't even know until a huge group showed up. Of course I was expected to pay, even though none of them were invited. We lost a beloved pet today. One of our friends said time to get another. Today this happened today. I'm not sure if he's stupid, insensitive or just an know we are not friends anymore. Some people actually cope with pet death by immediately replacing the pet. For them, it is easier to grieve while being distracted by a new creature. And they don't understand why anyone would process their grief any other way. He could be an a-hole. He could also simply process grief differently. If you go to someone's house and they cook for you, you eat it with a big smile and lots of thanks, even if it was garbage. My wife brought her friend over for lunch, I made pierogies, she goes that's not a meal, that's a side, and goes to get Quiznos. Blew me away. 
Someone's hospitality is the deepest respect they can show you. You have to give it back. How conscientious you are of that scenario is a good sign on how you were raised. Pierroches are amazing. What the heck. I would be so sad if one of my guests said that. I'm sorry that happened to you. Especially considering how labor intensive making pierroges is. Chewing with their ducking mouth open. Somewhat converse of this prompt. My dad does this very noisily and growing up around it has made me very conscious of not doing it myself. He's a great guy, but holy chiz, when he eats it sounds like galoshes walking in 6 inches of thick mud. When they say that they deserved being physically abused, I've seen the less extreme version of this, which is that they deserve emotional abuse, which they don't recognize as abuse. They don't ask about slash say hi to your family members when they come over. I've seen people completely ghost my parents as they walk through the house and I couldn't wrap my head around it honestly. Edit. I realized that a lot of people actually may be forced into this by any form of anxiety or any mental issues slash trays they have. I just want to clarify that this is not targeting those people at all. Just the people that straight out were never taught that this isn't polite or knew that and never acted on it. Some people have intimidating parents and if a friend doesn't introduce me, I might be too scared to say hello. If someone thinks hurting or treat an animal inhumane is alright. I love animals, especially my cat and dog. I speak out when I see someone treating their dog poorly. It's really reflects at dog parks and how their pet reacts. They gossip about others and will be vindictive behind people's backs but pretend to be sweet to their face. They will never try to defend something they believe using logical reasons. Thinking abusive slash manipulative behaviors are the norm. Sadly if you're brought up in that kind of behavior, you can genuinely see those behaviors as normalized. They blame others for everything, even things that have no blame to place. Deleted. Talking about themselves constantly, reverting every conversation back to them, etc and not paying their full bill. Entitled. People who are racist. Or people who outright refuse to believe racism occurs. They're a loner and socially awkward. I say this because I was neglected growing up and struggle with socializing. Hug weird. I haven't been neglected, yet I still feel like I have no real friends and suck at socializing. Oh well. Carrot, maybe I'm just really boring or something. Removed. Slash r slash oddly specific. So whatever this kid turns out to be is the answer to your question. I follow some trashy people from grade school on social media. There is one that is also posting memes for chis like, if your girl suck rig like this, you know she loves it, or I want a man that's dirty enough to duck in the bathroom at family dinner. She has an 8 year old kid. My future fianc, and I sometimes look and think, could you imagine if we friended the mom of our third grader and this was her ducking social media. Jesus Christ. We aren't in contact, but I'm almost certain that this kid won't be raised right. Oh yes a cousin of mine posts things like him a bitch and proud of it quite frequently, and I'm just so sick that she has three kids and number four on the way. Calls her youngest a fatter to his face, just plain old nasty and mean. Horrifying when we went to visit over SB, and I saw it in person. And my other cousin telling me not to allow my child near those kids without constant supervision. I done our man, that dude from 8th grade who made the teacher cry and kept on going and laughing and she was like in her 20s or 30s. They get angry too easily, I've been fighting this one for most of my life. They believe 5G causes corona. The way they treat an animal. If you're abusive to your pet, I have no sympathy for you. The amount of love that an animal can offer deserves the utmost respect. They find it amusing to annoy others even when no one else finds it amusing at all. I read this as was raised, right and I was very concerned reading these comments. They don't ask for things, they expect things. I find this is usually the case for people who grew up very well off. Treating service employees badly. Excessively emphasizing how masculine they are. 
they think handling a disagreement means shouting, attacking someone's character, name calling or breaking things. They're left handed. I was not raised right. Left instead. They don't push their chair in when they leave the table or pick up their own litter. It's a very little thing. But that's also the point. It's such a tiny thing that barring some severe disability or emergency, it should cost them nothing to take 5 seconds to push their chair back in after they get up or pick up their litter and toss it in a trash can. So if they don't, what does it say about them? How little consideration for others do they have? Or how narrow is their awareness of the world beyond their immediate experience? It's not that I or this means they are actively rude, so much as it implies that their palive or default state of being is the absence of consideration for others, and that means they weren't raised right. Came here to say this. My brother and I actively notice when people don't do this, especially when the two of us are the only people at a table to actually push our chairs in. Clearly we were raised right, and they weren't. And then we go and push everybody else's chairs in. Nice to me, rude to the waiter. They leave things from the freezer slash refrigerator section on a non-refrigerated shelf. They browse reddit all day. I resemble that remark. Littering. It says a lot about a person. They have lack of self-control. They are lazy. They are entitled. They don't care how their actions affect others. They are dirty. They are selfish. If they act like a spoiled bitch. Narcissism. It's a cascading failure since they have no self-esteem and will not take responsibility for their actions. It's a bit like having a frozen elbow. In this metaphor, a frozen elbow forces the other joints on either side of it to compensate for the work they are unwilling or unable to do, so the wrists and the shoulder must overdo and strain to do movement patterns they are not typically designed for, which creates problems in their movement patterns, and so those become messed up, and then other compensations in the body go up and down the movement chain. Narcissism is very much like this, since it externalizes all the costs of their unwillingness to others and society in the same way that a frozen elbow does. Worse, outside the body metaphor, such inflexibility is often seen as strength, since it is so single-minded and consistent. Imagine being so dumb to imagine that a broken clock being right twice a day is a strength and constitutes being consistent, but that's society today, and so others emulate this action purposefully, thus creating more and more, and more self-justifying self-rationalizing. Ignorant and inflexible jerkwoods claiming, do your own research when simultaneously knowing very little, yet against all obvious cause, produce more of themselves. When they make fun of people with autism, they think communism could work. But communism could work if everything had perfect conditions, which will never happen however having certain things work in socialist ways, such as healthcare, is working quite nicely for many countries, and has improved the life of many lower class people. A simple lack of manners sums up most issues. Leaving trash on fast food tables. They have people for that. Treating waiters or servers like garbage. Disregard for the environment and littering. Acting entitled to certain things like items at a store or discounts. Large attention grabbing tantrums. They chase black men down with guns for jogging in their neighborhood. Additionally, they defend people who gun down black men for the crime of jogging through their white neighborhood. Just jogging. Oh my. You watched until the end? That's ducking awesome dude. Thanks for watching.